What's up, people? It's King Dub the Seventh, and I already did my Hunter breakdown for you guys. I did a video talking about the Hunter class, talking about each subclass, talking about each different uh, avenue you could go down for the subclass. So that's over. If you guys want to check that out, then I might have a link somewhere around in this area, somewhere maybe. But uh, now, though. Now we're going to talk about my favorite class in the game. Now we're going to break down the Warlock subclass. Now that I've finally gotten a chance to play with the Warlocks in Destiny 2. Because as you guys know, I couldn't play with the Warlocks in uh, Destiny 2 on my other account. Because it's, it's a long story. But basically on my new account that I made because of the crashing stuff that was happening on the PS4 Pro. I started off with the Hunter because I didn't think the fix would actually work and blah blah blah. So I actually started off with the Hunter instead of my usual Warlock. But now I've gotten a chance to play with the Warlocks. I'm going to break down the Warlock class for you guys. And I'm going to give you guys some information. Before we talk about that though. Make sure you hit the subscription for more breakdowns like this in the future. More of my opinions on Destiny 2. Yada yada yada. Let's get into it. So the first Warlock subclass we're going to be talking about is the Dawnblade. Now the Dawnblade is the Warlock with the... Uh, Daybreak Super. The Daybreak Super is a super where you see the Warlocks running around with their flame source and a shooting projectile flame particle strikes out of their swords things. Now, the Dawn Blade has three jumps. It has the straight glide where you glide in midair after jumping. It's like a you have a good amount of direction and control but you glide very slowly. You have the burst glide where you're gliding in the air, but you get a very strong initial burst of speed. That's the jump that I like the most of the Warlocks. And you have a balance glide, which is a little bit of both. You have a good amount of direction control and a good amount of speed in the air. Your grenades, you have the solar grenades, create a solar light that does a continuous amount of damage. You have the fire bolt, which is it's a grenade where you throw it out and it sends a anybody in the radius it sends a bolt of fire at them which I do, I believe it does burn damage I'm not sure though and you have an explosion grenade the fusion grenade that uh, it sticks to your enemy and then it blows up after a short amount of time and I believe it does damage to everybody around that target also or anybody who's close to the grenade on that target and it also does damage if you don't stick it, but it does more damage if you stick. Now it's time for the two trees. Now the trees for the Dawn Blade is you have your Attunement of Sky and you have your Attunement of Plane. First we're going to talk about the Attunement of Sky. So first you have Winged Sun. Fire weapons and throw grenades while gliding. You have Heat Rises, Kill while Airborne, Recharge your grenade and melee energy. You have Icarus Dash, Double Press Circle while Airborne to dodge. And you have Swift Strike. Strike an enemy to burn the target and temporarily increase your movement and reload speed. Now, I like Icarus Dash, which is your uh, move, another movement ability that you have in air. Because of the fact that Warlocks are pretty immobile, period. We don't have as, much, as many movement options as the Titan and the Hunters. It's always nice to have another movement option such as a dash in the air, especially when you're a warlock and you're the most vulnerable in the air. It's always nice to have that dash in the air so you can get out of someone's uh, sight line. Or you can get someone into your sight line really quickly if they're like running away from you with low health. But everything else here, like I don't really like anything where the focus is you being in the air because you're so vulnerable in the air. But that's why you have your Icarus Dash, so you can get out of trouble if you're in a bad spot in the air. Now, for a two minute flame perks, you have Igniting Touch, strike an enemy to burn them, and then cause them to explode and kill. Fade it, uh, fade it for the flame. Daybreak projectile seek targets as they travel. Everlasting Fire, killing an enemy with Daybreak extends its duration. And Phoenix Dive, hold circle. Or B while midair to quickly descend and regain health. Now, all of these seem pretty useful. I like a melee that will have a chance to do uh, an area of effect explosion after 
it kills an enemy. I also like the fact that anything, so anything that makes your super heat seeking, anything that makes your super last longer, that's super useful in my opinion. And Phoenix Dive, it also gives you a movement ability in the air, although it's different. And if you're not in cover, it'll be easier to hit you if you just fall straight down because you'll fall straight down into still not being in cover, but you do regain some health. So I would personally go with the Tomb of the Flame if I were to pick, uh, if I were to use Dawnblade, but Dawnblade is also my least favorite of the Warlock subclasses. So yeah, there is that. Out of both of those, I do think a Tomb of the Flame is stronger in PvP and PvE, but I do not personally like the uh, the Dawnblade subclass. So that's it for uh, Dawnblade. Next up, was we're going to be talking about the Stormcaller. The Stormcaller has a Super Storm Trance, which is a super that you see from Warlocks where they're running around, firing, and emitting electricity from their hands. So the thing about the Stormcaller is the Stormcaller and the uh, Dawnblade have the same exact jumps. So we're going to skip jumps for the uh, Stormcaller because they're the same as the Dawnblade and we're going to go to grenades. Now your first grenades, you have Arc Bolt Grenade, which is a grenade that chains a bolt of lightning to nearby enemies. You have your Pose Grenade, which is a grenade that on a periodic basis, it emits a uh, pulse that damages people inside the radius. And you have your storm grenade, a grenade that caused down a focused blast of light. And now we're going to look at the perks. The storm caller has the attunement of ions and it has the attunement of element perks. So first we're going to talk about attunement of ions. Which, the first one is chain lightning. It delivers a single arc lightning melee strike. And that can chain to nearby enemies like I said before. I like a melee that has a chance to do AoE effects. You have Transcendent Storm Trance last longer if cast with full grenade and melee energy. You have Arc Web, enemies damaged by your grenades, chain arc lightning damage and nearby enemies. So that's all of your grenades gets a chaining ability. You have Ionic Blink also. So all your grenades get a chaining ability and I'm pretty sure Arc Bolt chains more than normal. You have Ionic Blink while in Storm Trance press the sprint button to teleport so that's pretty useful because one thing that you don't want to do as a storm uh, when you're in storm chance is you don't want to be focused fired down so you want that movement option so you can get to enemies and then you have the attunement of elements perk you have gale force which uh, arc lightning melee abilities hits at a range and restores your grenade and melee energy you have landfall when you cast storm trance a wave of arc lightning shoots from the ground beneath you or it doesn't shoot from the ground it shoots out to the ground so if you're above somebody and you cast your super then a bunch of lightning will come from you to the ground and it'll kill them you have rising storm your rift ability uh charges faster while allies are nearby and you have arc soul rift ability now grants you an arc uh so ally and ability so you have a little like arc buddy, like it's a little glowy ball of arc that shoots as you shoot. Like as you're shooting an enemy, it'll shoot like little arc bolts at the enemy also. So out of these two, I personally feel like there is little to no reason to use a tomb of elements. Because of the fact that, uh, so transcendence, like I said before, anything to where are not transcendence right it is transcendence anything to where you can have your super last longer is super useful um arc web is super useful and really the the best part about attunement of ion that my ability is ionic blink being able to move around with that much movement ability is just a must have in my opinion to where and uh, Attunement of Elements, I don't know, there's really nothing here that's like a must have. Like you don't need Rising Storm, Landfall is useful because the super is so strong by itself, you don't need, like if you're casting, if you're trying to cast your super over 
a bunch of people if you're trying to jump over a bunch of people in pve or pvp just to cast your super you're in a bad spot already and you're probably gonna die uh gale force i don't maybe gale force is probably the best ability there but i think that ionic blink arc web and transcendence are all pretty much better than anything that's in stormcaller uh two men of elements perk in, the, in that perk tree. So that does it for Storm Class, but not least is my favorite subclass of the Warlocks, the Void Walker. Now the Void Walker has the super ability Nova Bomb, which is an area effect bomb of void damage that just destroys anybody that's caught in it. So the Void Walker is the only subclass of the Warlocks with a unique jump and blink, which allows you to teleport uh you, it says teleport forward a few meters, but it actually you can actually teleport anywhere your momentum is. So if you're jumping to the side, then you'll teleport like up into the side or down to the side a little bit. If you're going up or you're going down, like you can you can blink downwards, you can blink upwards. You basically blink wherever your momentum is. And then you have your three grenades. You have your scatter grenade that produces one large grenade, which then explodes into a bunch of smaller grenades that. Uh, spread in like a large area but it they pretty much do damage to anybody in the area you have your vortex grenade which continually does damage to anyone trapped inside of it and then you have your uh, axion bolt which it splits into it's a grenade that splits into two larger bolts and seeks enemies out but it's pretty slow but uh, if it hits somebody it does a good amount of damage so now we're going to talk about the two void walker voyage uh, skill trees you have your tomb of chaos perk and you have your tomb of hunger perk so let's talk about chaos first you have chaos accelerant where if you hold the left shoulder button you draw super energy to overcharge your grenade which makes your grenade even stronger you have bloom which is an ability where your void uh melee will make people explode when they're killed you have cataclysm which nova bomb seeks out enemies but it's super slow and you can shoot at the Nova Bomb to uh, cause it to explode early. But when it explodes, it actually like emits, I think, four small Nova Bombs that also seek out enemies around. And then you have Entropic Pool, which strikes an enemy with your melee to recharge your grenade. For a Tomb of Hunger, you have Devour, killing enemies with this melee ability fully restores your health. You have Feed the Void, where if you hold the grenade button, you can actually use your grenade charge to heal yourself. You have Insatiable, which is while Devour is active, killing an enemy extends its duration and it also recharges your grenade. And when you kill an enemy, it also recharges your health. And then you have the uh, Vortex, which Nova Bomb creates a spot that continually does damage. Now, in my opinion, the Tomb of Hunger is by far the best skill tree that Warlocks have, period, out of all the subclasses. Devour is just so strong, and it, it pretty much... So, Devour and Insatiable go back and forth so well, it's just crazy. So, Devour, which is when you kill an enemy with a uh, melee ability, it restores your health. If you keep Devour on, then you can almost never die. Because, uh, every time you kill someone, you'll recharge your grenade, and you'll recharge your, uh, and you'll just continue to recharge your health. Now, let's take this a step further, because there are a couple of items that I want to talk to you about for, uh, the Void class for the Warlock. First, they're both helmets. First is Nazarak Sin. Nazarak Sin, what this does is avoid damage kills, increase ability energy recharge rate. So at first I was thinking, oh, so every time I kill an enemy with my ability, then it pretty much goes back into my abilities recharging. This also works with super by the way, but I wasn't thinking properly. It didn't hit me until I was killing enemies with my void weapons that I realized with Nazarek Sin, I can pretty much always have my melee and my grenade 
if I continue to kill enemies with void weapons and void uh, abilities. So that means I can continue to channel devour and because of insatiable which is killing an enemy extends uh, duration and recharges uh, devour duration and recharges your grenade my grenades recharge even faster so I can continue to just throw out grenades and if you looked at one of my other abilities I said that the strongest part about warlocks is their abilities so if I can have my abilities if I can just spam up my abilities then that makes me even more useful so that's Nezrak Sin. The next helmet is Eye of Another World, which what this does is it highlights and uh, priority targets and improves regeneration speed of your grenade, melee, and rift abilities. So, like anything, you have two. Uh, you have two exotic armor pieces. That just help devour and all of the, the things in the Tomb of Hunger out so much. There is like almost no reason to not use a Tomb of Hunger perk for uh, Void Walkers. And I think that's it. Well, before I go, actually, I'm pretty sure I forgot to talk about the class uh, skills. Which is Healing Rift, allows the Warlock to produce a circle of light which gradually heals the player and all of their allies inside the radius of the circle and a Pyron Rift. Alternatively, you can produce the same circle of light but this boosts your attack power instead of your healing power. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video, I enjoyed talking to you guys about the Warlock subclass, it's my favorite, uh, or the Warlock class is my favorite class, Warlock is my favorite subclass. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell for any notifications of my future videos. This is King Devil 7 signing out. Peace. Hear what I hear.